Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Tua Jadanan. The Tua Jadanan is a mysterious ancient race of beings that may or may not have existed in Ireland thousands of years ago. If you're familiar with the rich history of supernatural races in Ireland, you'll know there were plenty of mythological beings. The Tua Jadanan were unique in that they were said to have arrived in Ireland from somewhere else. They weren't spirits or monsters, but divine beings that arrived in Ireland from an unknown land. They were said to be extremely tall, as pale as ghosts, and with sharp green eyes and fiery red hair. There are a lot of legends about how the Tua Jadanan arrived in Ireland, and they are all pretty fantastical. Some sources say they arrived in dark clouds and were rained onto the land. But scholars believe there is a more rational origin to these supposedly supernatural beings. They more than likely arrived in Ireland on ships from Denmark. Irish myth says that these people lived in Ireland for about 4,000 years before suddenly vanishing. They may have been the real ancestors of Irish people living in a pre-Christian pagan society. Other claims say that they were aliens, a small group of powerful extraterrestrials who were reigned onto the island and then worshipped as gods. I definitely think the ship theory is more likely, but you know, aliens are always more exciting. Number 9. Li Ching Yuan Li Ching Yuan was the Chinese man who allegedly discovered the secret for eternal life. According to the legends, he lived for 256 years. That would mean he was twice as old as the longest verified human lifespan in history. That award goes to Jean-Louise Calment, who passed away in France in 1997 at the age of 122. Li Ching Yuan began to appear in stories in United States newspapers in the 1920s. He was supposedly born in 1677 in China and attributed his longevity to having a peaceful mind. He said that anyone could live for well over a century if they would just reach an inward calm and be one with themselves and the universe. Nobody knows just how old Li Ching Yuan really was. A correspondent for the New York Times wrote in 1928 that the old men in Li's neighborhood claimed their grandfathers knew him when they were boys, and he was a grown man. In his home, it was simply an accepted thing that Li was in his 200s. He was even interrogated by a local warlord who was desperate to learn the secret of Li's apparent immortality. Another claim is that Li buried 23 wives throughout his long life and frequently married women in their 60s. He supposedly had 180 living descendants at his time of death. There are no official records that can confirm if Li Qingyuan really did know the secret to incredible longevity. Science says it's unlikely, but there's no way for us to know. Maybe inner peace really does prolong life. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We've got lots more videos coming up. Number 8. Stargates of the Ancient World The ancient world is littered with mysterious stargates that some believe acted as portals, allowing in visitors from other realms. One of these mysterious gateways is at the Peruvian archaeological site of Ayumarca. The structure is made of two stone archways carved into a sheer wall of rock. Legend has it that the ancient Inca built the massive arches to serve as portals, allowing the gods to travel between worlds. They couldn't use it themselves, but the gods they worshipped could come through from an unknown land. The gateway was only abandoned in the 16th century when the Spanish arrived in South America. But this isn't the only stargate out there. There is also a gateway in Bolivia, in the ruins of the ancient city of Tiahuanaco. It looks quite similar to the gateway in Peru, a single wall with a doorway seemingly leading to nowhere. There are no other walls on the structure. There is no roof or stairs. It's just a wall with an empty doorway that may have once held a magical portal between worlds. There is no archaeological evidence to prove that these gateways once held portals. As far as researchers are concerned, these were more symbolic or ceremonial than practical. Still, similar gateways can be found in ancient tombs in Egypt, and there's supposedly a stargate near the ziggurat at Nasiriya in Iraq. It could very well be that they were once transit points for interdimensional travelers. Number 7. The Star Hole 
In 2007, workers in Norway discovered a mysterious hole punched into the solid rock of a mountain. The workers had just cleared away some surface vegetation and loose material when they found the hole, perfectly shaped like it had been made with a cookie cutter. The biggest issue was that it was punched horizontally to an unknown depth into the mountain. It was at least 12 feet deep, but the contractors supposedly never fully measured it. It looked, to them, like an endless star-shaped tunnel no larger than a person's fist. We still don't know exactly what the hole was or who put it there. Local blacksmiths in the Norwegian city of Volda say it was most likely made by human workers in the 1930s. It may have been the result of a six-sided drill head, and while that does make sense, it doesn't fully explain why there was only one hole in the middle of an untouched area on the mountain. Number 6. Medusa's Sarcophagus There is an ancient cistern 490 feet from the legendary Hagia Sophia in Istanbul. This mysterious cistern may have been the final resting place for the legendary monster Medusa. Its official name is the Basilica Cistern, and it's one of many hundreds that lie underneath the modern city of Istanbul. Cisterns just like this one were designed to catch and hold rainwater, allowing people to drink and wash themselves when the city suffered from droughts in the summer. But could this ancient subterranean cistern truly contain the sarcophagus of a mythical Greek monster? What we know is that the Basilica Cistern was built in the 6th century BC during the reign of Emperor Justinian I. At this time, the city was called Constantinople and was part of the Eastern Roman Empire. It was built at the location of a large basilica in the 3rd century, a huge underground chamber with the storage capacity of 100,000 tons. The ceiling is supported by a total of 336 stone columns. Two of these columns in particular are very interesting because they are shaped like Medusa heads. These two columns are different from all the rest in the chamber. They were built from a different material, and some believe are meant to mark the spot where Medusa's stone coffin was discovered. Legend has it that the mummy of a monstrous creature with a human head and a body like a giant snake was found in the cistern, and that it was disposed of for being such an abomination. Number 5. The Egg-Headed People of China the first truly advanced civilization in China emerged in the 5th century BC. They are called the Chou Dynasty, and they were really at the beginning of what would become modern Chinese society. But long before the Zhou Dynasty, there were primitive human beings living all throughout China. One of the most mysterious groups were what scientists have called the Eggheads. Researchers with the Jilin University School of Archaeology, along with members of Texas A&M University, came across 25 very strange ancient skeletons in northeastern China. These skeletons had skulls shaped like giant eggs, and they lived somewhere between an estimated 11,000 and 9,000 years ago. It's believed these may have been some of the earliest humans to purposely squish their heads to look like eggs. The practice of cranial modification was not rare in the ancient world. People did it in Africa, South America, and even Europe. People are still doing it today. What has really baffled scientists is that they've never been able to figure out why it started or why the craze swept across the globe starting thousands of years ago. For an unknown reason, people started squishing their babies' heads with pieces of wood or cloth, thereby deforming their skulls as they grew. In more recent times, skull modification was likely a sign of prestige. Priests, people in power, and minority groups may have deformed their skulls as a way of differentiating themselves. But why did this craze start in the first place? And did it happen first in China? These are questions archaeologists are trying desperately to solve. They think it could have been an attempt by ancient humans to make themselves smarter. They may have thought that elongated heads would give them greater mental powers. They may even have been inspired by unknown visitors from the stars with egg-shaped heads. Number 4. Peten Itza Peten Itza was the last kingdom of the Maya, a secret slice of history not many people are familiar with. The Itza were considered descendants of the A Itza Yucatecan Maya lineage, the people who dominated Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula for centuries from their capital at Chichen Itza. But as the Maya civilization began to collapse, things turned ugly. 
The Aitza Yucatecan lost their power struggle with the Kokom and the Xiu, and they were forced out of Chichen Itza and banished. Around the year 1441, they returned to their ancestral home at Lake Peten. This is all quite interesting because most people don't realize how many different kingdoms and ancestral lines there were in the Maya world. There were different houses, different families of nobility, and people always fighting for dominance and power. It was just like over in Europe. When the Maya civilization as a whole came crashing down, Peten Itza was one of the last to fall. The banished rulers of Chichen Itza had re-established themselves on a small island. They built the city of Noshpeten, located in present-day Flores, and thrived deep into the 17th century. The city, although small, had 21 pyramids, multiple temples and palaces, and large neighborhoods of thatch houses. The Maya here built defensive walls around the island to keep themselves safe from the Spanish invasion and from other Maya groups. Sadly, the city fell in 1697 to the Spanish. It was the final Maya kingdom to be wiped out 200 years after the Spanish first began their conquest of Mexico. Number 3. The Mithraic Mysteries One of the greatest secrets in the history of Rome has to do with the cult of Mithras. This cult emerged in the 1st century AD in the early years of the Roman Empire. The unofficial religion, which quickly spread through the empire, was dedicated to a mysterious deity known as Mithras. Modern scholars believe the deity was the Romanized form of the Iranian god Mithra and that his Roman followers developed an obsession with him. They began to participate in occult ceremonies, and the exact details of what they did during these ceremonies were highly secretive. The cult lasted for about 400 years, almost surpassed the new cult of Christianity in popularity, and then vanished without a trace in the 5th century AD. What makes the cult so difficult to understand is that they never wrote anything down. Or, if they did, no written first-hand information is around today. Those who were involved in the worship of Mithras were sworn to secrecy. The only reason we even know about the cult is because of archaeological discoveries and outside ancient sources. But these sources are unreliable, because those who wrote of Mithras weren't involved in it and had poor understanding of it. Early Christians wrote about Mithraism with extreme prejudice, believing it was anti-Christian paganism, akin to devil-worshipping. Some believe the cultists were obsessed with power and carried out secret child sacrifices. Other scholars believe it was more of a way for people to worship the cosmos and celebrate life cycles. Whatever the case, we don't know what the followers of Mithras did in their secret underground lairs in Rome. Secret handshakes, esoteric knowledge, magical rituals, it's a complete mystery. Number 2. The Forbidden Chinese Mummies China has a secret and forbidden history of Aryan mummies. The Aryans were supposedly a tribe from Central Asia that had blue eyes, red or blonde hair, and stood over six and a half feet tall. These mysterious Aryans were said to be some of the first Caucasian people who spread into Europe. And while we don't really know if the Aryans ever did exist, they've been around in legend and folklore for centuries. Two mysterious mummies were discovered in China in the 1980s with very similar traits to the mysterious Aryans. One of the mummies is 4,000 years old, called the Beauty of Lulan, and the other is 3,000 years old, called the Charchen Man. Genetic testing has supposedly proven that these mummies were indeed Caucasians, and that they roamed across China's Tarim Basin for thousands of years before anyone else arrived. Unfortunately, a lot of the science surrounding these mummies has been restricted. The genetic study of the mummies was only allowed in 2004, and even then it was carried out by the local Jilin University with foreign scientists supposedly largely banned. To make matters even stranger, Mysterious statues have been found from the Hongshan culture in China dating back to 3700 BC. These statues depict white-skinned humans with massive blue eyes. It's another curious piece of evidence that China was once home to a mysterious human race of giant Caucasians. Number 1. The Aphrodisiac and Cure-All Silphion was one of the greatest secrets of the ancient world. According to Roman historian and naturalist Pliny the Elder, 
Emperor Nero ate the very last naturally grown Sylphion stock 2,000 years ago. Nero thereby eradicated what was once the most coveted plant in the world. Sylphion, also known as laserwort, was cherished by the Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans. It was a kind of resin produced from a flowering plant that could be used in everything from medicine to perfume. It was a powerful aphrodisiac that supposedly drove men and women into insane fits of desire, and it could also be used as a contraceptive. The mysterious plant grew in Libya 2,500 years ago. It was around that time when the plant was first discovered by the Romans. But by the 1st century AD, 500 years later, the plant had been decimated. It was such a powerful thing that the people of the Mediterranean ate every last bit they could find. This really was a miracle plant, too. A scientific paper published in 2020 showed that the aphrodisiacal properties of the plant's roots really did increase the libido. They experimented with male rats, and it was so powerful that it turned the rats into crazed love-making machines in a way that absolutely shocked scientists. This plant is the first extinct life form ever recorded. In ancient times, it was crushed, roasted, boiled, dipped in vinegar, eaten raw, and fed to sheep to make their meat tastier. It could cure stomach aches, relieve pain, remove warts, and make bland food taste better. Maybe scientists should try to bring this plant back. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and come back soon.